Today I'm going to work on a very necessary but not very glamorous implement of the home, the trusty water closet. The problem with this toilet is it constantly leaks just a little bit. You can see the ripples in the water there in the tank. This is caused by water leaking past the flapper valve, that's that black circular thing in the middle of the tank, and that little bit of water leaks down into the bowl here, and the symptom of that is every once in a while the water level will get down low enough that this valve here will have to let more water into the toilet. So the theory of the toilet is water comes in down here through the valve and through this pipe here and through some water outlets down here to fill the tank and the bowl. When this float right here gets high enough it shuts off this valve. So if there's a constant slow leak that's So there's my, my cycling because it leaks a little bit. So if there's a slow leak, it'll just slowly lower the level of the water in the tank until it gets low enough to activate this float valve, and then it'll keep cycling every once in a while. This is bad because it wastes water, and it will prematurely wear out this valve here because it's, it's always at a little bit of a kind of a transitional period where it's on, off, on, off. It'll eventually just start leaking all the time. So you can see here when the float goes down, it allows water to come in, and then when it goes up, it shuts it off. When you flush the toilet, all that happens is this little chain right here pulls open the flapper valve allowing the water in the tank to go into the bowl. The flapper valve closes again and cycle repeats. I have two problems with this toilet. The leaking is caused by not the flapper valve itself but this plastic valve seat it has some cracks in it so I need to replace that. When I flush it we'll see what happens. Another problem with this toilet is that the seal between the tank and the bowl is faulty. So when I flush the toilet, water from the tank drips down onto the ground here. Let's see if we can see it here when I flush it. So basically I've got all kinds of problems with this toilet. Now I could just pull the toilet and replace it, but I think what I'll do instead is rebuild it. I can buy a kit that includes the flapper valve, the seal that goes between the tank and the bowl right here, and that plastic valve seat. And basically that makes it um, almost a new toilet. The, the porcelain parts don't really wear out. All that wears out is this valve, which I've already replaced once, and these parts down here. So to do this job, what I need to do is take off the tank and just remove the old parts and reinstall the new ones. So the first thing is to 
shut off the water service to the toilet. I've turned the water service off to the toilet and emptied the tank out by flushing it. So next I'll remove this flapper valve so you can see the problem with that valve seat. There are a couple of very small cracks right here and they're causing water to leak past the flapper valve and, that will, and that's what causes that steady little stream of water into the bowl. So this piece needs to be replaced. Next I will disconnect the water service to the tank. It's got a handy little connector here that I don't need a wrench for. I can just unscrew it with my hand. Even though the water is off, I'll place a little catch can right here for any excess water. And I also need to remove these two bolts that secure the tank to the bowl. So I'll just loosen these up to release the tank. And I'm going to loosen these evenly. I'm not going to completely loosen this one and then completely loosen the other one. I'm going to take a few turns off of this one and then take a few turns off the other one. I don't know how important this is for removing the tank, but definitely when you reinstall the tank you need to tighten these evenly. Now that the nuts are removed, the next thing I need to do is find a good spot for this tank because when I lift it off, I need to have a good place to put it. I've got my plan of toilet tank transfer lined up in my head, so I'm going to lift off the tank, dump the excess water in the tub. bring it into the utility room for further disassembly. With the tank removed we can see this big rubber washer here which is what was causing the leak to the exterior of the toilet on the side. It's all mushed here and cracked. So this will be replaced. Next I'll remove this nut on the underside of the tank. I don't have a wrench big enough for it. I have a pipe wrench but it's too small. So I'm going to improvise. I have these vice grip metal pincher type things. And I'll just clamp those on there. Hopefully that'll loosen it. It shouldn't be very tight, it's just plastic. kind of difficult because somebody put silicone, it looks like, under here. I don't think that's from the factory. I might be wrong though. So I'll loosen this up and remove the guts. Now that that nut is off, I should be able to Take this out. With this part removed, I can see further damage that wasn't visible 
when I first started the project, I thought that these little cracks right here were causing water to leak past this seal right here. But upon further inspection, you can see there is a crack in the actual body of this assembly right here. I think that's the main source of my leak. And there's the other side. So in any case, this part is definitely defective and needs to be replaced. So here's an outline of what I need to replace to get the old commode back in top form. The main part that's faulty is this valve assembly here. It has a big crack in it. This part is also bad. It's the gasket that goes between the tank and the bowl. Water was leaking past here when I flushed and leaking actually onto the outside of the toilet. The bolts are still functional but they'll likely come with the rebuild kit that I buy as will the flapper. When I first noticed that this toilet had a problem I suspected the flapper because oftentimes these are the problem with a leaky toilet because they get warped and they don't seal properly against this assembly right here so I replaced the flapper and it still leaked and that's why I'm in this situation but just kind of a note if you've got a toilet that does the symptoms that I'm describing that is every once in a while you'll just hear the valve come on Try and replace the flapper before you go into all this trouble because it's only a couple dollars and it could very well solve the problem. If on the other hand the toilet is constantly running, this valve may be faulty. To check this valve with the toilet tank installed, just go ahead and lift this up and see if the water shuts off. So if you've got a toilet that's constantly going shh, try to just pull up on this and see if it stops. If it doesn't, then this is your problem. So just a little bit of helpful hints with regard to the toilet uh, troubleshooting. And now it's off to town to get some toilet parts. So here we are at the home improvement aisle for toilets and I'm going to get this toilet valve and flapper which will replace this and a new tank to bowl gasket and bolts kit. Lucky for me the flapper valve kit is on clearance for $349 so score for me. So we'll just bring this stuff up take it back to the ranch and hopefully have a working toilet. I made it back home with all of my repair items. One nice thing about toilets is that the replacement parts are pretty much universal so you don't have to do a lot of research and find just the exact part for your toilet. This flush valve and flapper assembly says right here it fits all brands this is because most toilets are the same in that regardless of the brand they just have a three inch opening at the bottom of the tank so parts are easy to come by and easy to fit to the toilet before I replace these parts though I need to remove all of this old silicone that's right here if you're doing this repair you probably won't have to do this this is just kind of a I think a failed attempt um, from a previous job. Someone thought that the leak was probably right here when in fact it was the crack in this assembly right here which we can see right there. So I will clean all this off and then I can reinstall these parts. 
I've cleaned the silicone off of the tank, so I'm ready to install my new flapper valve and flush assembly. I've unpacked it. Looks like a nice quality unit, especially for the $3.79 that I got it for. But before I install it, I need to cut this overflow pipe to the same height as the old valve. The purpose of the overflow pipe is to allow water to pass through into the bowl if this valve sticks open. So if this one sticks open or it fails, water will just keep coming up, 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 up in the tank with nothing to stop it. If there was no overflow pipe into the bowl, water would come up over the tank and into your bathroom. But this pipe is kind of a safety mechanism to prevent that. So we want to cut it to the same length as this old one. So I'll go out to the shop and cut it with my hacksaw right now. Now that these are cut to the same length, I can install this into the tank. I'll remove this nut and put this into the tank. This rubber washer right here goes on the inside of the tank. So we'll just put this in here like this. And I'll put the nut on the other side to hold it in place. The directions specify to tighten the nut just one half turn beyond hand tight. So it doesn't need to be torqued down very tight. This isn't a school bus lug nut that we're working with here. I've got the nut hand tight and I've also got this positioned the way I want it. I want this overflow tube toward the back of the tank and the flapper right here in front of it. Now that the nut is hand tight, I can use my specialty tool to tighten it that last half turn. And that looks good to me. Now I'm going to take out this tank to bowl gasket and put it over this pipe right here. This gasket seals the tank to the bowl. It goes on like this. It's got a little cutout here for the nut. So I'll make sure that's pressed on there nicely. So now let's take it into the bowl and bring it into port. So here we go, special delivery. And now I just need to reinstall the bolts. The tank uses these brass bolts. I put the rubber washer on first and now these go into the tank and then on the other side, on the underside of the bowl you use a stainless steel washer and nut to sandwich the whole thing together. So I will place the bolt and washer assembly down through the tank. On my tank there are a couple of little rubbery plastic spacer things that needed to be aligned. These are meant as a cushion to separate the tank from the bowl so it's not just porcelain on porcelain there. So those are aligned and the tank looks to be straight with the bowl. We don't want a cockeyed toilet here. So all I need to do now is put the nuts and washers onto 
the bottom here and tighten everything down sandwich it together as it were so we're almost finished here I'm tightening up the tank to bowl nuts and these are not used for setting the tension on a long span suspension bridge they don't need to be that tight just snug we're dealing with porcelain here so both bolts are snug and the tank looks pretty level that's what these bolts determine if one is tightened up tighter than the other one it'll lean one way or the other so you might have to fiddle with that a little bit now that the tank is securely fastened to the bowl I can attach the chain here I wonder if this is where the term don't pull my chain comes from I'll never know so anyway this chain attaches to the flush mechanism so that when you push here, it opens up the flapper valve. I needed to change the position of this little hook here so that it would open the valve correctly. So you may have to fiddle with that a little bit, but I trust you can handle it. Also be sure to put this little tube down the overflow pipe here. This is what puts water into the bowl itself when you flush. I also have reattached the water supply so the next step is to just turn on the water and take it for a test flush turning the water on and let's see what happens Everything looks good here. The test will be now to look at the water in the bowl and see if I see any leaks or ripples. Looks pretty good. Compare that to this. And you see the difference. So now for a test flush to see if any water leaks out between the tank and the bowl. That looks good. And I call that a successful toilet flapper valve rebuild. Just for some clarification, if your own toilet has some questionable symptoms, if this valve is bad, you won't be able to turn it off. It'll just make noise like this all the time. And if that happens, water will start to just overflow into this tube and your toilet will run constantly. So let's imagine this valve is bad and it's always running. So push down here. And then the water will start going into that valve. And we don't want that. So that wastes a lot of water right there. You've got a bad float valve. If you have a bad flapper valve, this won't run all the time but it will just run every once in a while to bring the level of the water in the tank back up. So let's imagine we have a bad flapper valve or flapper valve um, body as I did. I'll just pull up on this valve a little bit to let a little bit of water through and you'll see that this valve here 
will run every so often. So we'll just lift this up a little bit. And you got a little bit of a leak here, so water comes down. And this valve will come on in a minute to bring the water up where it needs to be. And it's there for a minute, now it'll run again. And this will continue for a while, but all of these frequent open and closings of this valve will eventually wear it out to the point that it runs constantly. So there's a little bit of toilet theory, toilet diagnosis for you. I'm happy that I got my own toilet back into service so that it can serve its purpose here. Thanks for watching.